When it comes time to migrate from version 10 or version 11 to Automation 360, developers are faced with a couple different options. In this video, I want to talk about your different migration options and what that means for your final implementation and also what that means for your migration process. So first off, you may have seen a chart kind of like this before, either in a roadmap deck or in our documentation. Uh, I kind of took that one and modified it a little bit because I want to talk about some very specific things here. And I want to talk about what I would consider the three primary options for doing your migration. In the far left column here, we have cloud, and this is a fully hosted and managed enterprise cloud fully hosted and managed by Automation Anywhere. So when we think about the database, the control room, product updates, scheduling, and bot insights, all of that is running on Automation Anywhere hosted and managed cloud. The nice thing about this is that updates are taken care of automatically. You don't have to worry about that. Those are pushed directly from Automation Anywhere. Uh, that includes your control room, that includes updating your um, database. And when it comes time for updating your bot agent, and this is key, this is very different from what happens in V11. When it comes time for updating your bot agent, that pushes and updates directly from your own control room as well. So that's a big change from what we were used to seeing in V11 or V10. I managed an environment in V10 and we had to go through and like every time there was an update, I had to go to all of those bot runners and update every machine manually. And we didn't have SCCM to be able to do it. So I had to go and do a lot of those myself. It was a huge pain. So an architectural improvement in Automation 360 is that those bot agent updates push from the control room. What that means for you with a managed cloud is that your bot runners are always going to stay up to date with the control room. You don't have to worry about going and managing that and stuff like that. You may immediately think like there's no way that actually works. I promise you that it does. I've had several bots that run multiple times a day since May or March of last year and they have run consistently ever since. I check on them every once in a while just to make sure things are still going, but that's been on dot 20, 21, 22, and dot 23 now. Those are running consistently. I haven't had to update the bot agent. I haven't had to update the bot runner. All of that happens automatically. It's a really great feature. Now, the one thing I do wanna call out in that far left column though, is your bot runner. Now, your bot runner, I wanna clarify this because I've heard some developers saying, well, if I have to have this managed cloud environment, what does that mean for my bot runners? Can I actually use bot runners that are local, that are hosted in our environment, that are hosted on Azure or hosted on AWS? The answer is yes. And if you see in this row here for bot runners, it's the same all across. Whether you have this control room in cloud, whether it's in on-prem, whether it's in a self-hosted cloud, your bot runners can still connect to your control room, still accept tasks, you can still do development from those different machines. So regardless of them being in a cloud, self-hosted cloud environment, or they're local to your um, environment, or they're VMs that you have on some server that you own, uh, those are all fine. Your bot runners, your bot agents, your development environment can still connect to those control rooms regardless of where the control room is actually installed. Now, if you're migrating to cloud, right, this hosted managed enterprise cloud, you do have the ability to use the cloud migration utility to assist you in that installation and that migration. So the nice thing there is it will actually go through and migrate all of your data and all of your bots for you. You just go through this little, it's like a wizard basically, but you go through this little wizard, it goes through the process of migrating all of your data to that target cloud environment, and then you just log into the cloud environment, your stuff's already there, and you go through the process of converting your ATMX files, which are your bots, to Automation 360 compatible bots. So that's another nice feature of being able to use the Automation Anywhere uh, hosted and managed enterprise cloud. In the middle column, we have the on-prem installation. And in an on-prem installation, the data, the hosting is all done on your own infrastructure on-prem, right? So when I think about my database, I need to worry about um, high availability. I need to worry about how I'm setting that up with clustering. Uh, I need to worry about the same thing for my control room. So I'm probably going to want to use something like SQL uh, Anywhere to be able to access my database no matter what happens, right? So I have constant mirroring going on. I also want to consider 
where my data centers are, right? Like if I have a data center that's in New York and I have another data center that's in Colorado and another one in Texas, that's gonna allow me to basically have complete failover where if my New York data center is down, I can fail over to Colorado or I can fail over to Texas and I have that ability to uh, manage and keep my control room up and going. Again, a consideration I don't have to worry about if I'm using Automation Anywhere hosted cloud because it's their responsibility to make sure the control room stays up. It's their responsibility to make sure that it scales. If I'm doing this all on my own and I'm doing it on-prem, then that is going to be my responsibility to make sure that I've set this up to appropriately scale and to appropriately stay up in the face of server maintenance, servers going down, things like that. Product updates for on-prem would be done manually, right? Now, so I know it says uh, server here or whatever the on-prem logo. Technically, you would download those from the Automation360 website. This is on the A People support page where you can go and download all of your product updates. You would be responsible for deploying and installing those on your own. So that would be another responsibility of yours with an on-prem environment. With your bot runners, all of that's gonna be the exact same as cloud, as the self-hosted cloud. It can run on cloud, self-hosted cloud, or it can run on on-prem. These can be VMs, these can be physical machines if you wanted it to be, either way. The final right column there is one that I don't think gets discussed all that often, which is self-hosted cloud. So basically in this situation, I'm taking the on-prem installer and I'm installing it into a self-hosted cloud. And that could be in Azure, that could be in AWS, that could be in GCP, but all of the data and hosting is basically the on-prem infrastructure, but in a self-hosted cloud. Now I have the cloud logo here. This is just the way that I set this up. Uh, it does not have the Automation Anywhere logo in it, and that's to differentiate the fact that this is not Automation Anywhere managed and uh, hosted cloud. This would be your own managed and hosted cloud. So kind of like with the on-prem, you still have to make sure that you've got your clustering set up correctly. You still want to make sure that your database is going to be up and reliable and likely clustered so that you have that available to you at all times. And uh, the same is true with your product updates and scheduling and things like that. The, uh, the unique thing here is that it is technically in cloud, but I would be installing it onto Azure, AWS, whatever. I would still be responsible for doing product updates, right? So if dot 24 comes out or dot 25 is now available, I would need to deploy and install that myself, whether it's on my on-prem or self-hosted cloud. So you don't have that benefit of automation anywhere doing that for you if you're doing a self-hosted cloud. And I'm gonna share documentation links to all three of these implementations down below so that you have that and you can refer to those. Now, I'm gonna share my own perspective here. And again, this is 100% Micah Smith's opinion, so take it for what it's worth. I have been installing, managing, and running uh, enterprise software programs in large government implementations, as well as Fortune 100 companies, right? Prior to my time here at Automation Anywhere. I have a lot of experience in setting up these clusters, installing the software and things like that. This picture, kind of disgusting, but I want to tell the story around this, right? This picture was from the spring of 2016, right? We had just done a large implementation. We were, this is before my time doing anything with Automation Anywhere. I was running a large um, intelligent document processing platform and we were just doing IDP stuff at the time. So no Automation Anywhere stuff. We had done a huge release that was our big upgrade for probably the first half of that year, right? And we had done it on a Saturday night. We did it all remotely, it was fine. Everything looked like it was working fine. By the time we got to Wednesday afternoon, we started to have users that were reporting some slowness in the system, right? So I was the lead for this implementation and for this, uh, actually this entire software at this organization. So I started, you know, digging in, trying to figure out what was going on, seeing if I could figure out why things were slowing down. I noticed that all of our servers were basically maxed out on their memory and they were not releasing memory. So I initiated a failover, right? And that's just to see if there was maybe an issue with that particular server. Within a half hour, the next server had the exact same problem, right? So I knew it wasn't necessarily an issue with the, the failover cluster or that particular node. 
it was actually a problem that we had introduced with the system. Fast forward to that evening, right? It's like midnight. At this point, my boss's 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 boss had been engaged and uh, we had contacted the vendor and we were trying to get all of their resources to help us out to identify what the problem was. And they eventually came back to us and said, hey, this is your implementation. We can't replicate your exact system here. There's not a lot we can actually do, right? Awesome situation for a person like me. Because at this point, my boss's 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 boss was breathing by on my neck to figure this out, right? I had to get this solved. I had to figure this out because we had people coming in the next morning who relied on this system and our mail and our document processing and things like that couldn't just stop because we had a bad implementation, right? So I work through about 3.30 a.m. At 3.30 a.m., I think I've got it figured out and it happened to be a configuration issue with our cluster, also a configuration issue with their software, right? So I finally got it sorted out. I had to do it sans the actual software vendor giving me much input or insight. I get it figured out. By about 5.30 a.m., the system has been stabilized to the point where Everyone is comfortable with me finally leaving. So again, I came in at 8.30 that morning. I was working till 5.30 a.m. the next morning, right? No breaks, still going through it. I walked out to my car that evening and some bird had like completely lost all of its innards all over my car. I don't know if this was like a bald eagle that just let it happen on my car. First off, obviously my car's color was not the best to start with. So it's not like I had the nicest car in the world but that didn't help and especially at 5 30 in the morning and i tell you that story to say that when i came out to my car that morning i said i'm never going to put myself in this position again right i need to figure out how we can have experts at specific skills manage those kind of environments right so i'm not a clustering expert right I'm not an expert at installing SQL in a cluster. I'm not an expert at setting up a cluster across a WAN, but I was doing all of that here and I didn't have the help that I needed. So if we go back to that previous slide, if I'm given this option, I'm going hosted managed cloud every single time. And that's because the software vendor in this case, who is Automation Anywhere, is fully responsible for making sure that my environment stays up, my environment stays patched, and that my environment is able to scale. Okay, so in that scenario, I could have saved myself a ton of headache if all of that responsibility of setting things up, managing the cluster, and making sure that it was updated and patched and maintained was all someone else's responsibility. So that's just my perspective as a guy who's been through this. I've set up clusters. I've had to deal with this kind of stuff in the past. I would much rather offset that responsibility to the people who are experts at it than me try to figure this out and get stuck with a bird pooping all over my car at 5 30 a.m again okay hey thanks for hanging out hopefully you learned something about migration options and about what my car used to look like at 5 30 in the morning after a really rough night my name is micah smith go be great